All right, we got the fourth one. Now, I cut this person on YouTube before, but it's been three months, so we're going to have to redo this one. Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Beam, and today I got my boy Jonathan, one of the most elite kid waivers to sit in my chair up to date. We finna lock in. Let's get this money. So to kick this video off, I'll go in using my gold comb and I basically want to lift the wave pattern, which is one of the most important things you can do to any wave of haircut or any beginning wave of haircut. You want to lift the hair pattern before you cut it because you don't want to nick it. You don't want to skim none of the hair the wrong way. Comb the hair in its original wave pattern the way that the waves are going and it's prepping it for the next step, which is cutting it down ultimately to a desired length. Right here, I go in with a number two guard and the number two guard is completely clean clothes i'm going with the grain giving full strokes going with the brush pattern of his hair trying to keep all of his waves uniform No matter what I'm doing, I'm keeping everything consistent. I'm stroking one and then I'm brushing one at the same time. And what's really important is that I'm cutting them down to a two, trying to prep that crown, cause I'm cutting this crown with a three. This is one of the most fierce haircuts that you're gonna get on my channel in terms of hair density and the fullness of the lineup. So all of my beginner guys out there, you should not be able to fail this. If so, I'm gonna walk you through A to Z today on just basic wave of haircuts to help you guys get through it and help you guys get that that finished result that you guys are looking for. Right here, I go in with the number three on my babyless, and I'm just cutting the crown, getting everything down to that one desired length. Hitting them with the blow dry and cleaning the client off. My next step is to go in with my babeless skeletons, and I'll basically create a rainbow shape at the bottom of his sideburn because we will be blowing the sideburns out, keeping half of his C shape. Then I'll go in a half inch using my babeless trying to achieve a nice panel for this client then i drop them halfway here and i blend in between that and i'm gonna drop them fully closed here and as you guys can see this is almost blended out it's perfect i go in using the one eighth guard and it's halfway closed and i'm just basically debulking this area because a one eighth guard is gonna give me the room seeing i cut them to a two if you go into a one guard the higher it is in a one guard is gonna be close to that two right here i go in with a one sixteenth and I'm going open and close and I'm shifting in between it because I know I'm at the bottom of the last big wave, which is very important. Pay attention to your wave location. Right here, I go in the back using my FX Skeletals and I'm setting my ball line because Jonathan don't get a super high taper. I do a one and a half, then I blend that to a 1 16th and then blend that completely zero to open and it's gonna come together. So as you guys can see right here, going in with my one and a half completely closed. Seeing I cut him with a two, this one and a half gonna go perfectly in that two. I flip the clippers to kind of rake at the hair to trim that hair down some more. Then I go completely closed just to see what I'm working with. And when I see I'm not nudging too much hair, I know I got enough room to do every and anything. Everything with me is precaution steps. So right here is halfway. And as you guys can see, I'm still creating that gradient effect. Then I go completely open right here and I'm hitting the bottom of the hairs, giving myself enough room to go in using my 1 16th after this to clean up majority of my work and then the taper will be completely finished. Remember, always stay consistent using the hilt of your blade. You don't have to dig in the hair. You can create the transitions without having to use as many guards. That's something I pride myself on technique of not having to use a lot of guards, which is why I can cut in the 30 minute span or shorter. On the side, I go and I repeat the same steps I did on the opposite side, creating that round ball line at the bottom of the sideburns, blowing that panel out, but also reserving enough space in a corner, in a curve area to give him half of a C. I go up about a half of an inch, completely open, blow out a panel, and I'll blend this out. One of the biggest steps that I neglect a lot during my haircut tutorials is uh, telling you guys when you in a shop 
The only thing that matter, no matter what, is that your client like your haircut. That's gonna be something that I'm starting to show a lot on my series. It's not even about pushing some of the craziest work to impress people in the shop or to just impress yourself. At this point, it's about your clients. And one thing I like about my boy Jonathan is he actually care about a real haircut. As a 13 year old, somebody who know they haircut, that's why I ice him the way that I do. And I, I can't wait for you guys to see the end of the result because people who care about the haircut who sit in my chair, I know I got big dogs in my chair. So I go in and I brush all of this hair forward using my M spritz. I'm bringing everything forward. That's one of the most important things about a waver. If you're going to cut a waver, you need to use some hairspray, some spritz. You need to bring every hair forward because all of these hairs like to curl, especially by the lineup area. And it's only right that you prep yourself to do damage. Now we take it a step further in the process of any waver's haircut, which is the most important thing you could ever do, which is trim all of the loose hairs, the scraggly legs, roach legs, whatever you want to call them. You need to get these out the way. I don't do this at the end of the haircut because then you got hairs that land up on the lineup and it just take cleaning up way longer. So what I'm trying to explain to you is eliminating steps, doing things earlier, and setting yourself up for your kill shot earlier. That's important to be. When I'm cutting in the shop, I'm trying to alleviate my work. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, but as consistent as possible for my camera and for you guys. So I'm always locked in. No matter what, I hold the client head, keeping the consistent See of the clippers zeroed out and floating right over the waves, prepping it, prepping it for this lineup. All right, so at this point, we all chips in. I go in using the verticals on my Babeless FX Skeletals, and when I get to the top of the ear, I like to convert to the corner of the clipper just so I can work my way around the ear and create the best neckline possible. Remember, we trying to stay on the edge of these hairs and create the sharpest image while being on the furthest point of the client head. That is so important to these wavers. What's important to a waver is that that hair is laid all down to a desired length. The crown isn't poofy, and at the same time, you're able to achieve some level of crispiness. And that is super important. So with my client, I like to plait in the middle because he got so much overhang. But I'm not going to dig into it harshly because I see that every day on YouTube. I see people obliterate hairlines on YouTube off the strength of trying to make something perfect that was already set up perfect for you. Take your time, stay consistent, stay on the edge of them hairs, and slightly but surely carve them lines in. And as you guys can see, it's going to come together. You just got to take your time. You you gotta know your points, you gotta know your angles, and you gotta be up to par with your tools. You gotta be locked in, that's super important. I start from the bottom of the C shape, and I work my way all the way up, forcing a curve on this corner area. And as you guys can see, just my consistency of hitting the lineup more than once ago to show that I'm trying to achieve getting a super, super, super clean lineup. That's very important. If you don't go in multiple times and re-hit some of the same areas, the lineup isn't true. So to finish this side, I start in the middle and I literally just work my way all the way to the right at a consistent rate, not digging into the lineup, not putting any arcs or curvatures in the lineup. I literally went straight across, and that was one of the most simplest ways I could have showed you. Always keep the head planted, your vertical bars to create that 90 degree angle, and keep everything consistent. And as you guys can see, pro tip right here, I use the bottom of my brush and I slide it all the way to the right side, just so I can line up the bottom of my verticals and get my corners and my verticals at the same length, same width, and everything. Everything. This is how I create my level of symmetry. Understanding, no, when I'm doing my lineups, I'm treating them like common denominators. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And in reference of a lineup, whatever I do to one side, I do to other, just so I could keep it very symmetrical and very consistent. You got your old tips, your tricks that everybody use to achieve clean lineups. This is just one of the easiest ways for me to 
Create a clean lineup without having to do too much. So if you like that pro tip, try it out. Let me know what you think. I go in with my boy Sean Cuts here at Handsman Color Card, and I go in with the Beam Team Coilless Compressor, and I'm getting a little blotch color right there because I didn't clean my gun like super crazy. But it's a risk and reward game, and when you know your tools, it ain't nothing to clean up. It ain't nothing to get back in, in motion because this is what I do. I do this every day. I break my gun down every day. I'm using color every day. So no matter what predicament you put me in, in the shop i'm gonna be straight like i'm gonna get right that's what's important so as you guys can see i'm staying at that three to five inch distant radius with my gun just so i could get a nice color application on the front of the lineup and fill in any of like the lighter spots naturally he kind of has like a redirection in the front area so you want to go in and you want to hit those i go in using my barber magic pencil basically concealing my lineup the same way women will conceal their eyebrows they go in and they shape their eyebrows up then they add color or fill in to their eyebrows and conceal them and blend that out i'm I'm literally doing the same thing with the lineup and it doesn't take me no time this is literally a one to two minute process that basically makes me five to ten extra dollars on every service that I do and that's just off the strength of knowing my tools and knowing my products and knowing the strengths and weaknesses of all of them I really use my pencil for most of my Kodak moments most of my picture moments in the shop but it also helps me keep everything very symmetrical and everything very clean I go in with my trimmers behind that and I basically just hit the line so I could kind of blend this line the same way females will go behind that casilla with a blending brush and blend it all the way in. That's the exact thing that I'm doing. As you can see, my boy checking itself out. You guys know exactly what it's going. This one smoke, it's in the L. It's up there with this one undefeated like that's what i mean when i'm cutting an individual like this i'm undefeated bro you bring me a full head of hair with a full lineup it's a body 3-0 no debate and that's just how i move in a shop i literally mastered this angle of waving like i get this client and so many clients like this so much like i can do this with my eyes closed almost like i'm so elite and so up to par when it come to this level and i'm just having fun here i'm getting my boy in the game i'm icing him and i'm going behind it with my hand this mask is cleaning up his taper area ensuring and making sure that his transition is up to par that lining is already there so it's now nice time to cash in on all these chips i told we was gonna put in from the beginning it's time to make all of that bread back i'm stretching the skin angling my razor at a 45 degree angle bringing everything back to the lineup getting everything as flush as possible as consistent as possible here i go in with the backstroke which is more of a elite slash advanced move if you got a super exposed blade take your time with that you don't want to nick nobody and as you guys can see i'm stretching the skin i'm bringing everything down so i went against the grain then i went with the grain you want to make sure all them hairs is out the way on both sides keeping everything consistent keeping everything as clean as possible it's impossible to fail when you fo when you focus when you fully locked in and you fully engaged in a client like this it's impossible to fail Take your time, and I promise you everything gonna come together. As you guys can see, still stretching the skin, angling that razor, bringing everything down against the grain, across the grain, and with the grain, keeping everything consistent, getting my boy as crispy as possible. So in an imperfect world, we do get these clients that hold it down for us for three months. They do come in looking crazy, but it's up to us to change that outcome. And on my channel, y'all know how we give it up. Let's lock in. Hashtag TBT in that comment section. Hashtag Glacier Gang. It's 2020 is year to shapeshifters. We in that duffel this year. It was my blessing to give y'all a little bit of my game. And if you was able to kick it with me through this 14 to 15 minute video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got another banger coming real soon. I appreciate you guys so much and may God bless. Blah! That's it. That's it. Hey, Jonathan, tell him. Tell him what's up, man. Tell him what's going on here.